Tonight on American Booger Pickers, the pickers find themselves in a booger paradise. This guy's got a lot of boogers to pick through. All this and more tonight on American Booger Pickers. Nope, got a call coming in from Kerwin P. What's up, Kerwin P? Hey, what's up, Kerwin P? Hey, fellas, how we doing? Hot tip just came down the line. There's this guy, Elkskins, lives on the outskirts of town. He's got all sorts of boogers. All right, that sounds good. Text me the address. Yeah, I'll send you the address. Oh, and if you see any good boogers, pick one for me. Don't worry, Kerwin P. I know what boogers to pick for you. I know which ones you like. The ones that are deep in the nostril. Don't worry, I'll take care of you. All right, thanks for the tip. All right, bye. All right, slow down, Pa. It's coming up right here. Wow! Kerwin T was right. Yeah. This Elskins feller's got some boogers. Now I'm gonna need a tissue. Elkskins! Elkskins! Where are you? You here? Where are you, Elkskins? Elkskins, where are you? Where is this Elkskins guy? Hello, Elkskins! Where's this guy at? This Elkskins feller is a real character. Looks like I got a lot of boogers to pick through. What's up, Elkskins? You gonna let us pick through some of your boogers today? Yeah, sure. All right then, show us your boogers. Yeah, Slippers was right. There's lots of boogers to be picked here. Hey, Elkskins, what do you want for these? 400 bucks. This guy Elkskins, he's got out of his mind on these prices. But that's all right. I was a born haggler. B, here. How about I give you $2 each? Okay, deal. They were just junk anyway. Hey, Elkskins, will you take 100 for the pair? A lot of times I like to bundle two items together to get a cheaper price. That's what we call snot balling. Yeah, I'll take 100 for the pair. Great. I'll pick that booger. Hey, Elkskins, will you take 40 for the whole snot? Yeah, sure. Ha <laughs> awesome. I like snot balling too. Little trick I learned from the old man. <laughs> wow, wheel horse garden scratcher. You wanna sell this booger? No, I don't wanna sell it. You sure? I'm sure. All right, let's keep looking. So we were picking our boogers and scratching our behinds when we came across the ultimate booger. Is that what I think it is under this here tarp? A 69 Custom XL? Oh yeah! 6910 XL Custom! I gotta have me this booger. Elkskins has got all these classic lawn tractors lying around out here. And from what I understand, he won't come off of any of them. I wonder what it's gonna take to pick this booger. Elkskins, you wanna sell this booger? Yeah, I don't know about that. Oh, looks like we're gonna have ourselves a good old-fashioned booger bid on our hands here, folks. Take a hundred for this booger? No, that's too cheap. How about two hundred? Come on, you're wasting my time, Dactyl. All right, all right. Final price, three hundred. Give me three fifty, and I'll help you load it right now. For three fifty, I just picked that booger, and I already got a buyer who wants it. Well, Junior, I don't normally say this, but. Today, we picked us some sweet boogers. Ah, you dug deep in the nostril for that one. Way to go. I already got this booger sold. You know, there's a guy that's been hounding me for one of these for years. Way to go, Pa. Pterodactyl here. Today's how-to video is gonna be on this here Crower Magnum 20. This is a vertical 20, which is an MV 20. What I'm going to do is show you how to rebuild the carburetor. And it just so happens to be on our personal tow vehicle, which we call Moto. Not to be confused with the band Moto, Masters of the Obvious. So what we're going to do first, 
Take off the air cleaner assembly so we can get at the carpet tray. So we're gonna wanna remove the whole air filter assembly. Quarter inch socket. Be very careful you don't drop the screws down in the carpet trailer. Put our screws in our little magnetic dish. Then we're going to want to disconnect the choke cable. Again, that's a quarter inch headed fastener. Loosen it up enough to get it off. Here our uh, vent tube was already disconnected, which went through here. I didn't even notice that. It was already disconnected. So now we're going to want to disconnect this here throttle linkage. And it's got a little fastener on the bottom. It's like a little push, push nut. So very carefully, gingerly, work that off. And don't lose it. So hold your finger underneath it. And again, we'll stick that in our little magnetic tray so we don't lose it. Now we can pop this out. Now we'll disconnect the fuel line. Now if you ruin the fuel line, you'll have to get some more. All right, now we're ready to remove it from the engine and we just need a half inch wrench. Loosen them nuts up. Put them in our little tray where we don't lose them. There you have it. Now see, there's this little metal like gasket, I would guess you would call it, with fins on it. And what that does is that swirls the mixture, makes it twist. So now I'll take it to the solvent tank, clean all this off of there before we disassemble it. So this carburetor was made by Walbro for Kroller. And it's a pretty simple carburetor. So half inch wrench to remove the float bowl. And then we'll take a peek inside and see how dirty it is. Not too bad. Bowl gaskets. Pretty, pretty wore out. We'll move the hinge pin and take out the needle. So if you want a carburetor kit for this particular one, the part number is 2575711. Now some of these models also use that same Walbro carburetor that's on the K series. And that part number for that kit, that's different. That would have a removable seat. This one's not removable. A lot of times what will happen with these carburetors, this one's got the needle with the little clip on it. Sometimes they got a little spring on here. And a lot of times this rubber tip will fail. And that will cause it to leak. This one's got a plastic float. So if you happen to have one that's got the removable seat where it unscrews, 
That kid is 25757-01. So there's really nothing to this. Other than take out our high speed screw, take out our low speed screw, just blow it out real good. Make sure that tube down the center, there's a little tiny tube down in there. Gotta make sure that's clean. So this is your high speed screw. It's a long one. And this is your low speed. So we got those removed. And then we'll get some carb spray. And we'll spray it through the hole. As soon as the straw goes flying across the room. I do have a can that's got that little retainer on it. Where is that one? Let's shoot this over. And then we'll take some carb spray, spray it through the hole. Now it should come through here. There's just a little tiny hole. See? That's another way to check your passages or to find out where something leads. Spray some, some carb spray in there. That comes through there. So what happens is when the float pole's on there and it's full of gas, that's where it comes into this area here to bring it up through the main nozzle. And then when the air is rushing across that main nozzle, it's drawing that fuel out. So that's how they work. That's how a lot of these carburetors work. They're very simple. It's just like putting a straw in a glass of water and blow across the top of the straw and it'll draw the water out. That's what, how these carburetors work. So that's all clear. And then we'll shoot back through here. Because one thing people overlook is if any crap gets past the fuel filter, it could accumulate in here. And you wouldn't even think of it. And a lot of times people want to blow air this way through it. You should always blow it back out the opposite way. I don't know how many times I've had carburetors come in, especially some of them ones that use those cheap, clear, pleated fuel filters where you could see in it and it's got that fiber in there. I've had where that fiber actually started to deteriorate and it carried through and got plugged in here. That's why I like to use these type of fuel filters because it's got a metal screen and it's going to catch a lot of stuff through that metal screen. I don't trust those ones with the pleats on them. I've had uh, a lot of trouble with them because sometimes when the gas gets old and it gets sticky, it sticks to that pleat. And it won't, you know, and there'll be gas in the, in the fuel filter, and it might let some through, but it's not letting it through enough. And that created a problem. I bought a bunch of those clear ones with the pleats in it, and we had a bunch of jobs come back. We could figure it out, figure it out it was them fuel filters. We got a batch of bad ones. I sent them all back. So that's why I like using these, because they got the little metal screen, which they've got a micron rating on it, and it's idiot proof. Put it on either way. They also make these that are clear. You can see through them. So be aware of that. Always blow back through here. Because, like I said, we had, we had something, you know, that came in and the, the fuel was flowing through the filter. But the thing was starving for fuel. So I just very gently blew a little bit of air in here and all of a sudden a big blob of this stuff came out and it was brown and I'm like what is that I couldn't figure out what it was so I looked at it under my little magnifying glass and it was the fibers from that fuel filter so be careful you know some of those clear ones are good don't get me wrong I used to use them for years and never had a problem with them but some of them are made cheaply. 
They work for a while and then they fall apart. The main problem I had was on MTD equipment that had the MTD engine on it. I seen, uh, I think three or four of those mowers came in and that's what it was. After the first time I figured it out, when the other ones came in, I knew exactly what it was. Blew back through there, sure enough, a bunch of crap came out, knew it was that fuel filter. All right, so now this is pretty much clean, except for I wanna run a little wire through that center. We'll use our guitar strings. And make sure it goes up. Probably can't pick it up on the camera. But the wire is in there. It's went in pretty far. This little tube kind of runs up through the middle. All the way up into here. So when I pull it out, you can see how much of the wire went in all the way up to the tippy top. Now we can spray some spray in there. Hear it? You can hear it. You can see it coming out so we know it's clear. And then we'll spray in this other little area around it. And another thing, never blow into here when the carburetor is all assembled because you're going to ruin this needle and seat and you can possibly collapse the float if it was a, a brass float. So you never want to blow air through here when it's all assembled. Wait till you get it all apart. So now I'll blow it all off real good with some shop air and we'll put it back together. Now here's a little trick I do on the seat. I put a Q-tip into my drill. I spray some carb spray on the end of it. You can go in there and clean that, that seat out. In case it's all varnished up. You know, like this carburetor wasn't bad enough to put in our ultrasonic cleaner. So I can just do, do this. And then check your needle, like I said, make sure the tip is good, just in case you're putting this together without a kit, because if you had a kit, you'd get the new needle with it. But make sure the sides of the needle are clean. They're not sticky or got buildup, varnish buildup. So you can spray it with a carb spray and then take a little Scotch-Brite and clean it up. And then always make sure that little point on the clip is facing towards the center of the carburetor. And then we'll check our float level. And that's a good float level. You want it a little bit down. Problem a lot of people have, and maybe you're having this problem. If you got a float level, say it's like this, the mower may run, but it may only run for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, sometimes even longer. We've had them where people go, this thing will run an hour and then it acts like it runs out of gas and it was the float level. So float level is important. So you either want it level or a little bit below, but you don't want it bottomed out. You want to make sure it's not bottomed out. Because that's going to, being a little bit off level is going to let more fuel in. And that's what we want. So that level is good. So maybe you're saying, Terrell, I don't need to buy that whole kit. I just need a bowl gasket like you do. What's the part number to the bowl gasket? Well, here it is. This is the actual wall bro part number. 92168. See, it says gasket fuel bowl. So this is the one. I got my thumb over the price that we charge. 
Because some of y'all will be in the comments, you're ripping people all off. And then make sure that bowl gasket sits flat, doesn't get twisted when you put it on there. Because the new bowl gasket's going to be actually a little bit smaller. You got to stretch it, stretch it on here. So you want to make sure it's flat because it's a square gasket. It can get twisted on you, like Twisted Sister. You love my little musical reverend references, don't you? Okay, like I said, this is a real simple carburetor, but like with any carburetor, it's all in the inspecting. Inspect the needle, make sure it's okay, make sure the end isn't smashed. Stick that in there. Same with this one. And that carburetor kit comes with all these gaskets new. Comes with a new one of these gaskets. So turn them in until they stop. Don't force them. And I'm going to back this one out one turn. Turn this all the way in until it stops. Don't jam it in there. Now I'm gonna back this one off one and a half is a good starting point. All right, now let's reassemble it on Moto. Not to be confused with Masters of the Obvious. Now we're ready to reinstall the carburetor, which is just basically the opposite of how you took it off. Now I did run a new piece of fuel line from the pump to the carburetor because that one was pretty old. And if you watch the building of Moto, the tow vehicle, I already replaced all this fuel line in that video. Now let me talk about this fuel pump a little bit. I have a video on the K-Series engine where I eliminate this mechanical fuel pump I make a block off plate and I put a 1 8 barb like what's in here and I run a vacuum operated pump. I bought one of these aftermarket mechanical pumps for a customer's mower and it didn't last a year. So be careful with some of that aftermarket stuff. Now the original pump that was on there probably lasted over 20 years before it failed. And I could have did my vacuum operated trick to it, but I thought, you know what, It'd be a lot quicker and easier if I just, you know, maybe I'll buy one of these aftermarket pumps. It should work. And that mower came back less than a year later, not pumping any fuel. So that's when I did my vacuum operated trick. So I had to eat that one. I had to repair it again for free. So be aware of that aftermarket stuff. Not all that stuff is good. And if you're interested in uh, doing that conversion, look up that video. I show you how to do it. You buy that Briggs and Scranton vacuum operated pump. It's like $20, some fuel line, and then you just get a piece of flat stock 1 8 pipe tack. You can even take this fitting and use this fitting over because this is 1 8. Screw it into that block off plate. And another thing, always make sure the fuel pump is higher. You know, when you go to remount that vacuum operated one, make sure it's higher than here. Because if any oil gets into that pulse line, then it'll stop pumping. So it's always got to be higher. You can do that on any engine. I've even drilled holes in the engine block and tapped them. As long as I can pick up vacuum from somewhere. Valve cover, engine block, but you gotta be high. You gotta, it's gotta be above the oil line. All right, now let's pop our clip back in. Gotta turn it so it lines up with the little split in that plastic bushing. Snap it down. And then you may 
if you distorted this little baby clip, the little tabs, you may have to just take a pair of pliers and squeeze it to kind of mush those tabs back down. And then it'll, it'll lock on again. This is probably the hardest part of this whole carburetor is getting that little clip back on. Because it's so tiny. I don't know why they didn't use like a, put a groove in it and put like a little baby e-clip on there. So this is probably going to be the hardest part for you. So if you got a pair of hemostats, this will help to get that clip on. Clip the hemostats to the rod to hold it down for you. Because the problem you have when you go to put that clip on is it wants to push the rod up. And there's not enough of the rod sticking out to get it started. So if you can hold that solid, that'll help you to get that clip on there. All right, now let's reattach our choke cable. Make sure the choke is pushed in all the way and the choke is fully open. Let's check my choke knob, make sure it's pushed in. Yep. And now we can tighten this down. Be careful, because that's only a small fastener. And then check to make sure you're getting full choke. Yep, getting full choke. Now I'll reattach my fuel line. Carol, how come you didn't put a hose clamp on there, Carol? You should put a hose clamp on there. Let me tell you something. That hose fits on there so tight right now without a clamp. I bet you if I went to pull it back off with the pliers, I'd probably end up ruining the hose. A lot of times you don't need them hose clamps. I beg to differ with you, Daryl. Okay, well then put a hose clamp on it then. I don't care, but I ain't putting one on mine. Oh, now you got me mad. Where's my air clear? Here it is. This gasket looks like it's still good. But like I said in the kit, you'd get a new one. And then our put our vent hose in there, which wasn't hooked up. And if your vent hose is bad, you can look up a new one. Go to any of these online parts lookup places like Pro Parts. It's all oily. There we go. There we go. And then carefully don't drop the screws down in here. You can get them with one of those magnets on a stick. But one if you ain't got magnet on a stick. You have to go get some bubble gum and a stick. Mm. One more. If yours don't have this little rubber thing on it, that piece of hose, I suggest you get it. Or fashion one up. Because that helps to keep water out. You know, when you put the cover on, that makes a seal to keep water out.
Should probably put a new air filter in it too. I don't know if I got one. So now we're gonna fire it up. Fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. And we're gonna fine tune the carburetor. Now, think of the adjustments on a carburetor like a water faucet because that's how they work, the same way. You want more gas, just like you want more water, you open the faucet. You want less gas, you close the faucet or turn the screw in. So think of that. So if you got a motor that's starving or surging, needs more fuel. This is how you troubleshoot that surging problem to make sure it is the carburetor. If it's got a choke on it, slowly close the choke. And if the engine smooths out, that's telling you it's not getting enough gas because now you're choking off the air so it can get more fuel. And then you gotta go into the carburetor and figure out why it's not getting enough gas. So, and if it still surges, sometimes it could be the governor. Sometimes the governor wears, especially on an older engine, and gets a little little play in there because there's not supposed to be any play. That, that governor shaft is supposed to be, that lever on the governor shaft is supposed to be tied up against that spool that's inside the motor. So that'll make an engine surge too if you got any play in the governor. All right? So let's fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. Make sure we're neutral. Oh, I got gas in this thing. I've been running this thing. No. Oh. And ain't got no gas in it. Who said that? Ain't got no gas in it. Oh, them french fried taters. Ain't got no gas in it. All right, we got dinosaur juice in it now. Let's try it again. I'm gonna have to give it a little help with some carb spray. This isn't brake cleaner. Engines won't run on brake cleaner. This is carburetor spray. Sometimes you gotta give it a little help just to get her to lick off. That fuel pump's probably weak. I'm probably gonna have to replace it.
picks up and tune this carburetor because this engine has obviously got some other problems. Probably needs a valve job. It's got to be over 40 years old or about 40 years old. And that'll that'll give you problems too. You might think it's the carburetor, but in actuality, probably got a little compression because it's probably never had a valve job. So if you're adjusting a carburetor on an older engine and you can't get it to adjust, Chances are you got other problems somewhere. It ain't the carburetor. But at least you saw how to rebuild this carburetor, because that's what we were focusing on. And, you know, it didn't work out as well. It runs, but it kind of runs crappy. But at least you know how to rebuild the carburetor. So if you notice, these droplets here, that's gasoline that was shooting back out of the carburetor. That's a telltale sign of a valve problem. You got valves that ain't sealing. So look for that. If you got that, that's telling y'all you got a valve issue. It ain't your carburetor. So if you tuned in to this video to find out how to do the carburetor, you've also learned a bunch of other stuff too. And we will do a valve job on this engine. We'll show you how to do a valve job because that'll be next. So subscribe to this YouTube channel, Tarot Fixes All. Follow me with your motos on Facebook and Instagram. Go to our web store, buy some Tarot apparel, and we got other stuff, tools and other products, lubricants and stuff. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! had all kinds of boogers to pick. You're right, Junior. This thing's gonna fetch me a lot of money. So, uh, who's the idiot that wants to buy this thing anyway? I'm the idiot that wants to buy that old thing. Oh, hey, Kerwin P. Didn't see a stand in there. Yeah, maybe you should look around next time before you pull out an insult. The next guy might not be so nice. Sorry, Slippers. I guess you're right. Oh, huh. apology accepted. Now load this thing up, all right? Ugh, kids these days. Pick this little baby up, because I'm going to try my hand at a little custom restoration. Might have to have Terrell give you a hand, because I've never done anything like this before, and we're going to do a little series of videos on that. I think you'll all enjoy it. So stay tuned for more, and there's your stuff. Custom restoration, and we're gonna do a series of, 
serials of videos on that. 400 bucks. <laughs> Action. Ho oh, ho ho! Looks like we're about to have ourselves a good old fashioned booger bid on our fa on our hand there. Right booger bid? Or what is it? Booger? You're wasting my. <sighs> wow, look at this! This is what I call a booger wall of push mowers. Haha! <laughs> Great job, Pa. You dug deep in the nostril for that one. <laughs> <laughs>